Okay, this is something I had actually planned on keeping to myself. But now I am thoroughly convinced that something seriously fucking serious happened with that eclipse. Now hear me out because I'm not one of those people who likes to over dramatize shit like this. And you know, I know that I am a public figure in the spiritual community. I know that I make a living doing readings and whatnot, but when it comes to anything of a spiritual nature or, you know, an energetic nature or anything paranormal or supernatural or any of those things, I'm a very open-minded skeptic. Open-minded. I'm not one of those types of people that's very closed-minded. I want to believe it. I want to. But I'm not just going to believe something just because I want to believe it. I'm an open-minded skeptic, okay? So, I think we, we all kind of noticed that this eclipse was being treated very differently than other eclipses. You know, um, we've all lived through eclipses throughout our lives. I've heard of it happening several times. Never in the history of ever never have we ever heard warnings on the news, you know, don't travel. Uh, if you travel somewhere, <clears throat> take emergency food in case there's food shortages. I'm like, what the fuck? So, I mean, we all kind of, hopefully we were all paying attention to that and like, what the hell are they talking about? But the majority of us, myself included, didn't take that seriously. Just like, man, whatever. It's just the fucking media trying to do what they always do and get you to shit your pants, you know, for whatever fucking agenda that the people who control the media have. And they're just trying to scare everybody. So on the morning of the eclipse, I woke up and not only were my nerves in a knot because... We had traveled down to ground zero in Texas where we were going to be experiencing the, the total solar eclipse. And we were at this big spiritual convention, right? And I found out that I was going to be the one to close out the whole event. And so my nerves are in a fucking knot, dude. I'm like, I, what the fuck? Why are they? Why are they? Picking me to close out the event. What? What? Why? Put me in the middle somewhere or something like that. I've only spoke publicly one time before this, you know? Anyway, um, somehow, some way, a fan of mine and David's ended up spending the night at the house that we ended up staying in. I didn't know this. Uh, the other roommate, who was another speaker, um, knocked on the bedroom door and said, hey, there's this person who gave me a ride home is a fan of you and David, and uh, she wants to meet you. I'm, I'm like, what? what the fuck is this? So I said, okay, cool. I walk out into the kitchen to talk to this lady. And <clears throat> as soon as she starts talking to me, my vision starts doubling and blurring. I start getting woozy and like, I, I can't understand what this lady's saying. I can't even look her in the eye because my eyes are wobbling. And I'm like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on with me, dude? And I start feeling very violently, almost ill, like, my equilibrium, my equilibrium starts getting all fucked up and I can't think straight. I can't see straight. Okay. It's in the morning. We, this is still the second day of the event. And, uh, you know, my wife has this, um, this booth set up where she's selling all this crystal jewelry and whatnot. And, you know, I'm helping her out with it. You know, whenever throughout the whole event, you know, I'm there with her helping her and whatnot. 
So we got a ride. Somebody's coming to give us a ride to the convention center. And, and the house we were staying at was like way, way out. It was not anywhere near the convention center. It was like 15, 20 minutes away. It was way out there. So I'm like, oh my God, what is going on with me, dude? Holy shit, what is going on with me? So the people get there. Everybody's trying to talk to me. I'm trying to play it as cool as possible and, and not let anybody know that anything weird is going on. But I can't hold my eyes open. My equilibrium is all fucked up. I'm losing my balance. I'm like, what the fuck is happening to me, dude? <clears throat> it felt like I took an overdose of Kratom is what it felt like. Yes, I do take Kratom. Um, nowhere near as bad as I did last year before I put myself through that withdrawal, you know, uh, because it, it, it got to the point where I lost control of my Kratom usage and I was taking an astronomically insane, crazy amount and, and so I've, I've seriously pulled that back and I have a lot more self-control and self-discipline with my Kratom usage now, but I still do take it. And on that morning specifically, I was running a little bit low, so I didn't take a whole lot. I remember very specifically saying, oh, okay, I got to make this last at least two more days. So I'm just going to have to just take the, a tiny little bit of it. And I took the smallest little baby dose that wouldn't probably wouldn't even do anything to somebody who's never taken it before, possibly, you know, and I feel like I just ate a whole fucking bottle. My stomach is rolling. I'm like, what the fuck? I get in the back of this car, these people who were trying to give us a ride to the convention center. I didn't even tell my wife what was going on with me. So I'm trying to play it cool. I'm not trying to let nobody know because I don't know what the hell's happening to me. And people are trying to talk to me and whatnot. And I'm just back there with my eyes closed in the back seat, like, oh my God, what the fuck is going on with me? Let me just try to meditate and, and get this to go away. So, you know, finally, obviously my wife can tell something's going on. She's like, what is wrong with you? What is going on with you? She's getting kind of frustrated and pissed off at me. And I'm trying to keep it between us. I'm like, Shh quiet, you know, like it's causing tension between us. And finally, I said, look, I don't feel good. I don't know what the fuck is going on with me, but I need to lay down. They stopped at a gas station. I ran in the bathroom and threw up and you know that I figured that may help. I don't know. It didn't help. We get to the convention center. David had parked his RV in the back lot and that's where he stayed. He didn't stay in the house. He stayed in his RV. <coughs> So he was asleep in the RV. I went up in the back of the RV uh, in our room, mine and Leah's room, because he has a two-bedroom, two-bathroom RV. It's a badass RV, dude. And he sleeps in the master bedroom in the front. So me and Leah had the bedroom in the back. I ran back to our back bedroom, climbed up on that bunk bed, and just fucking knocked. Just knocked, man, for like a good hour, hour and a half. I'm just... Whoa, 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 whoa. Like I'm half in and out of consciousness. I have no fucking clue what's going on with me, dude. Finally, I'm like, man, I, I have got to get up and, you know, go hang out with Leah while fucking poor thing is in there in the convention center dealing with all these people all by herself. I need to, I need to be able to go help her out. So meditating for about an hour, hour and a half kind of, you know, got me feeling better. I could, you know, at least see a little bit straighter and walk a little bit straighter. <clears throat> and I walk up in there and ended up some people doing some energy healing work on me. Um, cause there, there was these people that had this booth set up there where they have this really crazy energy technology with like this pyramid and, and these little circular things with these wires wrapped around it that that put off this crazy magnetic field in this pyramid anyway they put me <clears throat> you know in the middle of this pyramid and do all this energy work this this girl does like some kind of reiki on me or something like that it it started pulling me back and pulling me back and pulling me back finally after about two or three hours i'm feeling back to normal by the time it's time to go and watch the actual eclipse anyway I, i'm trying to keep this to myself I'm like, I don't know what the fuck happened to me, but I'm kind of embarrassed. <laughs> I have no clue what that was, but I'm embarrassed. I'm like, did I, did I accidentally take an overdose of Kratom? That's kind of what it felt like. 
But it's like, dude, I don't even have that much, you know? So I kind of just put it behind me and, and try to tuck it away and forget about it because I have no clue what the hell just happened to me. And uh, just yesterday, my buddy Case with the YouTube channel Everyday Masters put up a video. He was down there at the event too, where he was giving away copies of the, the book that he just wrote. So he was there with us. And uh, he puts up this video about, you know, what happened during the eclipse and this and that. And, and uh, he starts talking in the video about how he's overhearing conversations of people being like, man, I had this crazy experience where I had to start crying and bawling and, 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 and he was kind of a little bit skeptical too. Like, yeah, you know, whatever. I didn't feel nothing. It, he, he's, he's very similar to me. You know, he's actually a Virgo sun with a Sagittarius moon. You know, I'm an Aquarius sun with a Virgo moon and a Virgo rising. You know, that Virgo energy is very no nonsense, no bullshit, you know, open-minded skeptic. I'm not just going to over dramatize some shit, you know, cause it sounds cute. If we're talking about something energetic or whatever, we're, you know, being serious. So then he says that I think he took like a little hit of a blunt or something like that. And then, and then all of a sudden I'm, I may be, you know, paraphrasing it, but something to the effect of he started feeling like he had overdosed on mushrooms and started feeling like, oh my God, what's going on with me? Couldn't walk, couldn't see straight. And I'm like, dude, that's what fucking happened to me. And then, and then later on in the video, he's talking about other people. He's overhearing other people talking about they, they, something happened to them where, where they couldn't walk, couldn't think straight, couldn't see straight. It was just like, had to lay down because you literally can't function. It's, it's beyond just an energetic and emotional anomaly, which most of these things like astrological events, such as retrogrades and whatnot, which <laughs> we're in the middle of a Mercury retrograde too. Usually that's more emotional and psychological than anything else. Sometimes it can be physical, the, the energetic shifts, but for the most part, it's usually, um, it's usually psychological and emotional. And, and that's really easy to just pass that off. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not Mercury retrograde. You're just, you're just being dramatic, right? It's easy. It would be easy for a skeptic to pass that off, you know? There's this meme that I see floating around social media sometimes that says, you know how to survive Mercury retrograde? Don't believe in astrology. And it's like, you fucking idiot. Anyway, so this is like beyond that, Okay. This is pushing past emotional and psychological anomalies and whatnot. And this is getting to the point where this is physical. And, and what I'm hearing Case talk about happened to him and happened to the people that he was around and hanging out with. I'm like, dude, that's what fucking happened to me. I texted him and I was like, dude, I'm so glad you made that video. The morning of the eclipse, something happened to me that I, I can't explain. I have no idea. He, he likened it to feeling like he took too many shrooms, even though he didn't even take shrooms. And I was like, dude, I felt like I took an overdose of Kratom is what it felt like to me. But I didn't. I didn't even have that much. I took a tiny little bitty baby dose that wouldn't do anything to anybody. So that made no sense to me. And now I'm starting to think. I'm starting to hear he sent me a video um, where people are talking. There's... A lot of people have reported on the day of the eclipse experiencing some kind of serious energetic anomaly. That's the word that I'll use. Uh, to me, it felt kind of like an energetic attack is what it felt like to me. Um, was it an attack? I don't know. But a lot of people, a whole lot of people experienced a serious energetic anomaly. I heard other people say that during the eclipse, it felt like they were on drugs, like, like they took Molly or something like that, you know? And now I'm really sitting here thinking, <clears throat> now that I hear that I'm not the only one who went through this crazy 
what feels like a drug overdose. Like I threw up, dude. Okay. This was more than just a psychological, emotional thing. I threw up. I fucking barfed. My stomach was in a knot. I couldn't see straight. I couldn't walk straight. The reason we were being warned about this eclipse is because they knew that something is happening with this particular eclipse. Some major crazy frequency is hitting the planet. Now, is it the actual eclipse? I don't know. Um, or is it like an energetic or bio attack? I don't know. Did they just use the eclipse uh, as the right day to fucking unleash a bioweapon or, or, or something like that. I don't know. But they knew that something crazy was happening on the day of the eclipse. And something crazy did happen. One way or the other, though, it was definitely a major energetic reset. Major. Major. I know me, I was pushed off onto a different timeline. I can feel it. Even ever since we got back to Southern California, I can feel a timeline shift. The energy in the air is very heavy and very intense. And, and you know, again, I don't like to over-dramatize shit. I don't like to be one of those people that, you know, just says, Oh, man, this is crazy just because Mercury is in retrograde and this and that. And blah, blah, blah. I, I don't like to over-dramatize shit. Like if, if there's a mercury retrograde, that's really intense. I'm going to tell you, it's really intense. If it's not that intense, I'm going to tell you, and this one didn't bother me that bad. I, I, you know, I can float through this one. Ever since we got back to Southern California, the energy in the air feels very, 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 very different. Very different. There was definitely an energetic reset and I feel like a major timeline jump and why the media chose to scare the shit out of everybody. I'm not a hundred percent sure. The only thing that I can speculate or postulate is that they didn't want you to get anywhere near the eclipse. They didn't want you to do anything that will harness the energy of that eclipse because, you know, we're making a major timeline jump in this shift, in this transition that we've been going through of dismantling the old 3D earth game and birthing a new earth game into existence. During this little particular section of the game was a major, major timeline jump. Major. So you have to, you can't jump timelines too fast like that. You can't change frequencies too fast. If you try to change frequencies too fast, it could literally kill you. Okay? Because when we say frequency, we're that that's not... Woo woo. Uh, we don't use the word frequency as a metaphor. It's not analogous to anything. We mean literally the frequency in which you are vibrating. The cells in your body, you know, the, the energy in your body is vibrating. And you can't speed up that vibration too quickly at once, or it could kill you. It could stop your heart. So you have to slowly, gradually move through the frequencies and vibrations and slowly, gradually transition through the timelines. And this one was a major frequency and timeline jump. And lots of us, lots of us seriously felt the effects of making a major timeline jump, a major frequency jump, you know? So, oh man, I, I, you know, I, I was wanting to kind of keep that to myself because, you know, it sounded kind of silly. Everybody warning about the eclipse, like, oh, take emergency food. Oh, you know, make sure that, that you're in a safe place. And, you know, I was like, man, that's so silly. That's so stupid. Ain't nothing going to happen. It's just a fucking eclipse. This shit's not that uncommon. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of for the area that it was in the U S it's not going to happen for another 20 years or so, but eclipses happen, you know, a oh boy now after what happened to me on the day of the eclipse and what I'm hearing from many, many, many other people who experienced something very, very similar. Now I think those warnings that, that we were getting from the media and whatnot are kind of starting to make sense. They knew 
that something crazy was going to happen. They knew that a new frequency of some sort is hitting the planet now. So, yeah, any of you who experienced something crazy and kind of like me may have felt a little bit embarrassed by it and want to keep it to yourself, you're not alone. It happened to me. It happened to a lot of the people that I know. And I'm even seeing videos of, you know, YouTubers talking about the same thing, you know, feeling very violently ill or not being able to walk and whatnot. So anyway, I take it as a good sign. Even if you didn't react to it very positively, it is still indicative of a major timeline shift. Okay. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Yep. This, this was a, a big deal, but stay positive. We're moving in the right direction. Uh, things will happen during this transition that could scare the shit out of you, but regardless, it has to happen this way. All right. All right, y'all I'm gonna get out of here. Stay blessed.